Good morning. How are y'all? I'm going to be showing you guys today how to make a Georgia Rican style pound cake. I don't know about you guys, but that's just like one of the classic Southern, um, you know, sweets that you share with people that come over when they're sick, when they've had a baby, um, you're celebrating something or holiday. It doesn't matter. Um, a nice pound cake is always appreciated. And here in the South, being in Georgia, we love some, you know, pound cake with fresh peaches on it and some fresh um, whipped cream and things like that. And I just love a good, good pound cake. And uh, my husband's stepmom um, makes one of the best um, that I've had. And I love it. She does like a cream cheese pound cake. Well, I'm going to make a version of that by infusing some of my Puerto Rican culture in this pound cake. So stay tuned. It's going to be delicious. First off, this is what you'll need. You'll need a mixer. You'll need some sugar. Whatever flour that you prefer for your cakes. Whatever flavor you want. I'm going to do a pina colada kind of inspired pound cake. You need six eggs. Three sixths of butter. I think it's actually two and a half. No, three sixths. One eight eight ounce cream cheese or this might be a ten ounce. Whatever the standard eight ounce is. I have some fret and some pineapple that I had left over from when I made pina coladas. And then some rum. Um, typical is like Bacardi, Puerto Rican rum, but Don Cu is also Puerto Rican rum. Um, but instead of using the traditional rum, I wanted to do a flavored rum. So I had picked this up um, the last time I traveled to Puerto Rico. And it's pineapple flavored rum. So I thought that might be delicious. Then there's this passion fruit one, which I might um, do for another um, video. And then your pound cake pan. You can also use a bump pan. You don't necessarily just, if you don't have one of these, that's okay. And so, and then I'm going to have some coco lobos. And this, I'm also going to make a, um, kind of like a, an icing, if you will, that will go on top of the cake. It doesn't need it, but it's going to be so delicious. So I'm going to put some uh, cut up pineapple in my batter, this cream cheese. All this is going to go in except this. I'm just going to put, make an icing for the top. Um, my favorite part about pancake is that crusty part that you get on the top when it's been baking. And, oh, it's so delicious. So I don't want to necessarily mess that up, but I just want to infuse more coconut in the recipe so this is all that you'll need again i like to use the cake flour swans down cake flour sugar the reason why they call it pound cakes like because you use a pound of butter a pound of flour and a pound of sugar um and that's it welcome to georgia rican style pound cake Ready to get started today we're going to do the georgia rican style pound cake which i'm going to do a little flare and add some pineapple and coconut just a very tropical um, flavors we're going to start off by blending our softened cream cheese which is eight ounces i'm sorry it can be whatever brand or flavor you like or you prefer we're going to put three sticks of butter that have already been softened. They're not melted, but they are softened. Room temperature is fine. That scared me. <laughs> and here's the third stick. We're gonna move it. Um, Kind of incorporate that a little bit and then i'll add the sugar in there incorporate that and that's three cups of sugar it's a very sweet southern cake lift that up now that that's incorporated we'll go ahead and add our sugar and that's three cups of sugar. Okay, 
basically one pound of sugar. Let's see if I can fit my scoop in here. it should look well incorporated butter sugar and cream cheese okay earlier if you saw me jump heard a noise it was this <laughs> it did exactly that so this is a hand a manual uh, food processor it's from pepper chef and so since I don't want to get my whole big old food processor out and I just want to basically you could use a knife or whatever but this was in the back kind of wet and I didn't want to use one of my cutting boards that has the well in it. It's really big. And this is a very small project. So I'm just using this food processor um, and everything you can just wash. You're going to want to put the blade in. Now that the blade is in, go ahead and get your pieces of pineapple and put it in your food processor. Let's start off. I think I have four slices there. The good thing about this little doodad is this for right or left-handed people. So you just do a little rough chop like this, or if you're left-handed, if you um, have diced or crushed pineapple, you can use that too. I want it rough chop. But I want you to be able to see the pieces. You know what I'm saying? If you can see that. Hope that's delicious. I'm gonna go ahead and start incorporating this in there. the rest of this put my blade back in I didn't have many slices it's just left over from when I made piña coladas the other day piña colada oh my gosh it's just one of my favorites so fresh and easy if you've never made them go ahead and make them I try to get an even workout with mom so there you go Again, just a rough chop. Just scrape the sides. Makes it a little bit easier to put in here. Like I was saying, if you've never made pina colada, make it. You won't regret it. You'll stop buying mixes or you'll and you'll probably stop ordering it at restaurants or bars because they don't compare to homemade all right this is a quick little mm, that's amazing the smell already so then you want to do your eggs you want to do them one at a time and that's just like you can put it in a bowl crack one each in a bowl and then just to people like to do that in case one is messed up then you don't miss you know mess up your whole batter i'm pretty confident these are good yeah you can always look at it before you dump it in see if you see something kind of crazy so you're supposed to be doing it one at a time i just put two oops so let's just do one at a time you 
once it gets pretty well incorporated, you can go ahead and put the other one. And I have my trash can in my island, so a lot of times people are like, where is she dumping? Look like she's throwing everything to the floor. No. My trash can. flavoring so we're going to use one and a half teaspoons this is one teaspoon measurement a little handy dandy pampered chef little they slide back and forth so you can do the different measurements you don't have to have all the little spoons which is fine too but if you have you know space constraints then you can just have two flat little things that give you most of the measurements that you need. Put a little extra just because. Mm. It's going to be amazing. Then incorporate that. I was struggling with that at first. All right, I'm gonna do just one shot glass. The alcohol is gonna cook out. What you want is that flavor to stay. So that's probably about like one or two ounces. And now we're ready for our flour. Go ahead and mix that up. I'm gonna lower this and kind of scrape the bottom of the bowl. Even though my paddle is usually really good about doing all that, I just wanna make sure and double check. Now let me show you how the batter looks because now that we put you know, the eggs and all this stuff is it, going to look different than when it was just the butter and the sugar and cream cheese. So I don't want you to be like, oh, my it's too watery or whatever. It's fine. All right, so this is the consistency. You know, just like a regular batter. It's going to get thickened because we're going to put the flour in it. See those chunks of pineapple? Yum. Okay, once I incorporate my flour, which is three cups, I'm going to go ahead and put in my pan. So I'm going to go ahead and prepare my pan, which is a pound cake pan. If you don't have a pound cake pan with a removal center, then go ahead and use a butt pan. Anything that you have on hand will be fine. Um, a tooth pan or any other name, that, a fluid pan, whatever they call it. But this not a spring form pan but you get the point so one tip and ignore my sink because it's full of dishes a good tip of when you're spraying your pans is to do it over the sink because anything extra that you know falls out a lot of time falls on people's floors and they slip on it because it's greasy so a good tip to avoid that either do it over your trash can like this or just do it over the sink That's my baby in the background. You okay? She's watching her TV. <coughs> okay. I'm going to have to use a different device because it keeps cutting me off. But it sprayed really well. Now for the six, three cups of flour. And my mother-in-law taught me how to make the pound cake. Not this one, but this basic um, cream cheese pound cake. And she always recommended this flour, so that's why I've always done it. 
And the first time I ever had it, I think it was for Christmas when I was marrying my husband. And I had married him in November, so that December uh, we had Christmas together. And I have loved it ever since. And every time I go, I tell her, all right, before I leave, I need half that cake. Because, I don't know, it's like, I guess her family is so used to it. They'll eat all the other desserts. And that's the, about the only one that I do eat. She loves for me to bring my red velvet cupcakes. And I love to get her pound cake. So this year, I was like, last year, you let me go without having my big old chunk to take home. She's like, and then this past year, excuse me, I forgot again. And as I was leaving, she came running out the house with a big old piece. It was super sweet. And I was like, thank you so much. Because that's what I look forward to. So, go ahead and put this in. It would help if I raised my bowl. So you can tell I'm, I'm not a professional. <laughs> I just love to cook. And in this instance, bake. My mom asked me for a pound cake this week. Well, I think it was last week. And with the coronavirus and everybody being quarantined, wasn't sure how I was gonna get this to her. But I'm gonna make it and split it with her and my dad. And hopefully they enjoy the surprise of a piña colada, piña colada pound cake. Okay, you know what's bad is that I've been talking and I'm like, how many cups of flour have I already made? I don't know. So now I have to watch my own video. I know I'm going to put this one in, but I don't know if this was the second or the third one. Oh, the struggles. Bloopers. So that was the second scoop. So here we go with the third scoop. O-M-G. So that's how it's looking. So well incorporated. I'm gonna pause it and then I'm just gonna scrape the sides and the bottom just to make sure it's all getting together. But y'all wish you could smell this. Oh my gosh, it's amazing. Some of the flour that likes to rest on the top sometimes. So now we're just ready to load up this thick, yummy batter into our pan. So I probably should start it off with this, but preheat your oven to 350, which I have. I actually pre mine, uh, preheat mine, excuse me, to 375, so that when I open it up, it leaves room for the difference in temperature that escapes. And then once I open it up and put my cake in there, then I lower it to 350. After it. Cause then usually it's like right there but if i start off at 315 then i open up and if i'm putting one or two you know cakes in there then the temperature drops so there's a little tip do it a few degrees higher than what you need it all right so i was gonna put this in but i'm gonna taste it i know a lot of people are like oh it has raw eggs in it and that's my business oh my gosh so good so good. Actually, next time. Mm, I taste the coconut slightly, but that's okay because we're going to make an icing with the coco lope and the liquid of the pineapple a little bit together and some confectioner sugar. And we're going to drizzle that on top. All right. Oh my gosh, you guys. This looks amazing and i already keep saying that but it is and it, it smells wonderful and it smells so fresh and today 
It is raining outside and I'm just gonna pretend it's a tropical storm while I make my tropical inspired piña colada pound cake. This would be great in the summer, well, any time of year, because obviously it's March right now. But if you're doing a cookout or a baby shower or anything and it's tropical inspired, y'all, this is going to be amazing. I'm so excited. So to recap what we put in here. So for those Okay, so here it is. Here it is with the little chunks of pineapple in there. I'm gonna put it in the oven. So there it is at 350 degrees. Okay, so to recap, we use eight ounces of cream cheese, three sticks of butter, softened, three cups of sugar. You mix that well. I added four, five, six, like six or seven slices of pineapple um, that are in the dole. And I just roughly chopped them, stuck them in there. Six eggs, one at a time. Or if you just wanna crack them, you can always crack your eggs all in one bowl and make sure they're good. And then put them in one at a time and let it incorporate. And then instead of one and a half teaspoons of vanilla or almond, I use coconut extract the coconut extract gave me that extra kick of coconut then i put in a couple ounces especially the shot glass worth of pineapple rum donku it's puerto rican rum you can use bacardi um, or anything like that traditional and then when that's all incorporated one cup at a time three cups of flour and like i told you i prefer this because it's just turned out delicious and wonderful every time never have had an issue with it then you're going to bake it for one and a half hours on 350. the tip that i told you before was uh-oh hold up okay so like i was saying sorry i had to tend to my baby girl we're basically a hospital here when you have a special needs kids you got to be prepared to stop anytime her brother came in, so he's taking care of her now. But you're going to cook it for an hour and a half on 350. And what I was saying, I think, before I paused it was that, hold up again. My goodness. And I'm not professional, so I'm not going to be able to cut all these little bloopers out. And it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. So take three. Preheat your oven to 375. Then when you're ready to put your cake inside, when you open up the oven and the temperature drops, it's really gonna be set right at 350. You can close it, lower your oven to 350, set it for an hour and a half to bake. I always start with one hour because every oven cooks differently. Every state, depending on your elevation, cooks at a different, whatever, sometimes it'll be more gooey, more drier, whatever. So I start at one hour and then I check it and then I do it for 15 more minutes. And then I check it, if it needs, uh, I feel like it needs it, I'll do another, the other 15 minutes. If not, I'll just do five or 10 or whatever, however I think. There's never, like I said, like hour and a half, set it and forget it. When baking, I don't, I don't think you should do that unless you've tried it over and over. And this I may take a little bit longer because I put more wet ingredients in it i added the rum and i added the fresh pineapple so that may cause it to have a little bit more liquid it might need to cook longer it also might make it super moist which is it's always going to be moist anyways pretty good because of that cream cheese in there but yeah i'm excited to see how it turns out i will show you that afterwards and y'all enjoy happy cooking happy baking i'll show you the end results and then i'll show you how to make the icing okay 
Okay, now this is going to be the very quick and easy, not really measured, you know, topping, icing, if you will, for your pina colada bundt cake. I'm just putting a little bit of confectioner sugar in here, probably like three tablespoons. I have that extra pineapple. This is a juice that was in there, but I just remembered I had pineapple juice from when I made the pina colada, so I'm just going to use this pineapple juice. Because I know it's not from concentrate. It's 100%. A few little splashes. You can always add to this, remember? And then I had the leftover Coco Lopez from the Pina Coladas. And I'm just going to put this. I'm going to throw that in there. And you can also use coconut extract. But I love this stuff. It's, it was in the fridge to see how thick it is. But... That's all we have in here. Just a little bit of pineapple juice, fresh, some coco lope, and confessional sugar. And you can do the coconut extract, but why? When you have coco lopez, pineapple juice. I'm really just using the powdered sugar like a stabilizer, like if it was flour. Give it a, a taste. Oh my god, this is heaven. Oh, tastes just like a pina colada. Put a little bit of more pineapple juice. See the consistency? It's just like this. Mm, Y'all. So when it's over, it's going to be amazing. It smells so good. I'm going to put this on side. When my cake is over, I'm going to let it cool completely before I put that. Almost completely. I'm going to try to hold off and not get a hot piece because that's like one of my favorite things is fresh out of the oven cake. Um, so wish me luck to control myself. But that's my thing. That's one of my weaknesses, cake and then ice cream. Like, I love ice cream, but I'm I'm a plain girl. I like vanilla ice cream. Then I like to use it up sometimes with caramel and stuff, but yeah, I'm plain. I like all kinds of ice cream. Coconut ice cream, so I don't like the flakes in coconut ice cream, but the smooth, original, like, coconut ice cream from Puerto Rico. Oh, my gosh. It's amazing. All right. So, there you go. Went ahead and cut a piece. Here's the icing that we made earlier. Here's the cake piece. I think there's a little bit of pineapple right there. And this is what you want to hear. That crisp. Okay, time to taste. Drizzle, drizzle, drizzle some. This on the cake. My favorite part is this top part with all, let me get a smaller piece, with all that crunch. Mm. So creamy, so good, thick and dense like a pound cake, but you get that hint of pineapple and coconut you get more of the pineapple coming through because of the chunks mm, that icing yep so i hope you get a chance to try pina colada pound cake from this georgia weekend from my kitchen to yours buen provecho